right, so yesterday we were working on factoring. Today we're still factoring. We're just factoring to solve. So we're just taking we're just taking that one more step from yesterday. So we're page 46, I believe. 7B. Were y'all okay with your factoring yesterday? Y'all seem to be you seem to be all right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of remind you, there's not a lot of room for me to draw this on here. So going back to like algebra one, you remember like we have a coordinate plane and I have a graph that it comes down and it just like touches the axis and then bounces back off. That's one solution. Y'all good there because it just touches it the one time or one root. If it comes through and it touches like this, then that would be two, two roots or two solutions. And it could be going the other way. I'm just drawing this positive. And then sometimes we have this situation where it like sits up here. And when I had y'all in algebra one, and then in, um, or when I had y'all in algebra one, we wrote no, we wrote no um, real solution. So because the reason is it's no real solution is because in algebra two, we discover that we can find a solution. They're just imaginary. Um, there are solutions, but I mean, we know solutions are where we cross the axis line. So technically there aren't any real solutions, but then we do imaginary. And when I had y'all in algebra one, I told y'all that I said, for now, you're going to have no solution or no real solution, but when you get down to two, I'll teach you how we can actually find a solution. You remember that? So we're not doing that today, but we will be doing that pretty soon. Um, so when you write your solution, they have this set notation. I'm going to do it on the very first one, and then after that, I'm not going to make y'all write it as set notation. I just want you to recognize it. Y'all okay there? So it's just typically we're going to have like two numbers in there. Sometimes it's one, but I will talk about that as we get to it. All right, so yesterday we started off, we're looking at a, um, a GCF. So if I look at this right here, what can I take out of both of these? Yeah, but taking out one doesn't help. What else can I take out? I can take out a 1x. So if I pull out an x, then I have x squared divided by x, which leaves me with x, and 9x divided by x, which leaves me with 9. So I have something that looks like this, right? We okay there? Okay, and again, like the first time I go through, like we're going to do it the long way and show all the steps, and then when we later, like we'll kind of skip, skip over some of those things. So in algebra 1, we separated this, and I took this factor here, and I said it equal to 0, and I took this factor here, and I said it equal to 0. Does that look familiar to y'all? You remember doing that? Well, here, x equals 0, so that's great. Here, if I set this equal to 0, then I've got to solve that, which means how would I solve this? Yeah, I would subtract 9 to the other side, right? I would subtract 9 over there, so I would end up with x is equal to negative 9. So if I'm writing this as the actual like, correct set notation, then I have to draw that set there and I write negative nine and zero, and we do write the smaller value first. But y'all know I'm not gonna make you draw those little set deals because that's just time consuming and it's unnecessary for, for the purposes of what I need because I just need you to get the right answer. But know that like on a test, if they're writing it as an answer, to it, like they're gonna write it in set notation. So I like to show y'all what it's gonna look like. Are y'all okay there? All right, so here, same drill. Um, I need to see, I'm checking for a Z, GCF first here. There's no C value, so my hope is there's a GCF, otherwise I can't do anything, which there is. What can I take out here? I can take out 4X, which leaves me with 4X squared divided by 4X leaves you with X. Negative 8X divided by 4X leaves me with minus 2, technically still all equal to 0. Split that. When I set this equal to 0, then my next step here essentially would be to divide out my four. Are y'all good there? Which means X is still zero. 
and I'm not gonna make y'all work all that out. Here, kind of the same deal. I know that if it's subtraction on this side, then two is gonna go to the other side, and this is gonna become a positive two. Are y'all okay that that's what that's gonna become? Okay, so then my solutions, I have zero and two. And I'm perfectly fine if y'all write it that way. Are y'all okay there? All right, so I'm gonna skip, this was the difference of squares. Y'all should recognize that from yesterday. This one is also, so I'm gonna solve this one and skip that one. Y'all okay if I skip this one? Okay. All right, so this one, when I solve this, remember my difference of squares, essentially that means I'm taking the square to the front and the square to the back, and my signs are gonna be opposite. So are y'all good there? So the square root of 9x squared is going to be 3x, are y'all okay there? And the square root of 25 is 5. So then I have 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5. I'm only going to solve one of these, okay? So I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to do this one on this side over here, okay? So if I solve this, because, you know, technically it's still equal to 0. So if I have 3x minus 5 is equal to 0, then the first thing I would have to do here is move my 5 over, right? So then I have 3x is equal to positive 5. Then what would I do? I would divide out by 3, right? So this side I get x is equal to positive 5 thirds. Well, if this one became positive 5 thirds, then this one over here is going to become what? Negative, Negative 5 thirds. And so I would write that as x is equal to both positive and negative 5 over 3. Now, can you write x equals negative 5 over 3, comma, positive 5 over 3? Perfectly fine if you do that, but it is not necessary. It's okay to write it this way. Are y'all all right with that one? When we get a situation like this, there's no c value there, or sorry, there's no b value in this problem, which means this quadratic was just shifted way down the axis line so it's still centered at that axis line. That's why these are the same on the left and right side because the graph's not shifted. Y'all okay there? The same would have been true here. I would have plus or minus two. Are y'all all right with that? Okay. All right. Um, let's look at this one. This is pretty straightforward. Back in from yesterday. I have a leading coefficient of one, so I'm going to go straight to here. Y'all okay there? All right. So x squared is always going to split and be x and x. What are my signs going to be here? Can I go back to yesterday? Both negative. I know they're the same because this is positive. I know they're negative because B is negative. So they're both negative, which means if they have the same sign, I'm adding them together. So what are my two factors that multiply to 21 and add together and give me 10? 7 and 3. Those are the only factors really of 21 besides 1 and 21, which doesn't help me there. All right, so if it's negative 7 inside here, when I solve it, it's going to become what? It's going to become positive 7, and this is going to become a positive 3. So if y'all remember, you know, in Algebra 1, I made you like, write it out every single time and solve it by hand. But in Algebra 2, like, we don't have to do that quite as much because y'all have your reasoning's just better, and you've seen it before. All right, so if I go to number 6, what do you see here? I'm going to take out a 2. I can't take the x out because this one doesn't have one, but I'm going to take out the 2. Absolutely. If my leading coefficient isn't 1, I'm hoping I can take it out. If not, then i got to do something else. But yeah, I can take it out here. So I pull out the 2, and then I have x squared, and then this gives me minus x, and this gives me minus 12, all equal to 0. And sometimes I forget to write my equals 0, but and y'all, if y'all do, I, I'm not going to beat you over the head about that. All right, so now I can split that. Two comes down. Got this. X squared is going to split it to be x and x. What are my signs going to be here? Same or different? Different because my 12 is negative. All right. So instead of adding my two numbers together, I'm going to multiply. My two, I mean, I'm going to subtract my two numbers. So what two numbers multiply to give me 12 and subtract and give me 1? So what are factors of 12? 1 and 12, right? That's not going to give me 1 if I subtract them. 2 and 6, not going to give me 1. 
Three and four are my numbers. Okay, so I know I've got three and four. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. How do I decide which one is which? Yeah, the bigger one is going to get whatever sign this is, right? So that means the four goes here and the three goes here. All right, so this right here is my factored form. Okay, when I'm in the factored form, the two must stay because we're not going to write the factored forms of these all the time but I mean this is the factored form meaning <clears throat> if my question just said to factor I would stop right there does that make sense but the two has to be there but when I solve this what would happen here is when I start separating this and I set this equal to zero well two does not equal zero right so two isn't part of my answer for the solution does that make sense now that's different than out here when I pulled and I had a 4x out front because when I set that, then x can be zero. But here it's not because there's no x with it. Does that make sense? Y'all okay with the difference in the two of those? So if I had the factored form, the two has to be there. But once I start solving, then I don't need that two anymore because that two really just tells me that that whole thing has a stretch. Y'all know that that's what the two out front means. Everybody okay there? So really all I'm looking at is this is going to become what? And this is going to become positive 4. So x then is equal to negative 3 and positive 4. And the 2 doesn't have anything to do with the solution. The 2 has to do with the stretch in the graph. Does that make sense? Which means if I didn't have this 2 and I graphed this thing right here and I graphed this one up here, they're gonna have the same solutions, like they're gonna cross in the same places, but this graph up here with a two on it is gonna be skinnier because that does that stretch. Does that make sense? But your solutions are gonna be in the same spot. All good there? Okay. All right, down here. Um, I'm gonna skip over seven, I'm gonna go to eight. Y'all okay there? Go there right there. Okay, here, if I look at this, my first thing would be I wanna take six out. But I can't take 6 out because I can't take it from these two, and I don't want to have crazy fractions. So we're going to use our other method, which we talked about yesterday, was your slip and slide. Y'all okay there? All right, so when I slip and slide, what am I doing? Good. And my constant back there. Very good. I'm going to multiply that coefficient of 6 to my constant back there. So that's going to give me x squared plus 5x, and 6 times negative 4 is going to give me a negative 24 equals zero. Now I can go factor this. Okay, so x squared is going to split. My signs are going to be different. Very good. Okay, so that means I'm subtracting in the center when my signs are different. All right, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 24, and when I subtract them, I'm getting five. Three and eight, and which one's positive and which one's negative? Very good. Eight is positive and three is negative. All right, now I have to go back and do what? Yeah, I gotta divide that six out. So I got this here and I got this here. All right, so eight over six simplifies and gives me four over three. And three over six simplifies and gives me one over two. Are we all right there? All right, now, if I was asking you to write the factored form, I'd have to push these back up here. So my factored form would look like 3x plus 4 and 2x minus 1. Are y'all okay that that's what the factored form would look like? But if we're solving, I don't have to go all the way to factored form. Does that make sense? Because then I'm going to turn around and take it right back out. Is that logical? So if I know that this looks like this, and every single time, whatever this is, it's going to be the opposite sign when I solve it. Then I can say that this is going to be negative 4 over 3. And this is going to end up being positive 1 over 2. Are you all okay with that? Negative 4 over 3 and positive 1 over 2. Otherwise, if I took it all the way back to the factored form, then I'd take 3x plus 4. I'd set it equal to 0, subtract the 4, divide the 3. Well, it's really unnecessary to do that because I know what it's going to be from right here. So just make sure, like, you know, like, is, your, is whatever you're doing asking you for the factor form? If they are, then you've got to slide that back in. 
if they're just asking you for the solution, I really just have to take the opposite sign. Are y'all okay there? Does that make sense to everybody? Anybody have a question on that or we're good? All good? Okay. All right, so back here. Now here we end up with an issue where I'm not equal to zero, right? Which means I've got to get everything over to the same side. And typically, if it is possible, I want my x squared to be positive. I don't want it to be negative. Does that make sense? So I'm typically going to take stuff to this side normally. So if I move this over, that gives me 2x squared minus 5x equal to zero. Are you all okay there? All right. Then I'm looking for a GCF. I can't take the 2 out, but I can take an x out. Are you all okay there? So if I take out an x, then that leaves me with 2x minus 5 equals 0. This is going to become what? If I said it equal to 0, it's just what? It's just 0. So that takes care of that one. So then this one over here, this is just equal to 0. This over here, I would have to move my 5 over, right? So if I move my 5 over, it becomes positive. So 2x is equal to positive 5, and then I would take out my 2. So x then is 5 over 2. Are you all okay there? Mm -hmm. Now remember, whatever my sign is in my parentheses, my solution is going to be the opposite sign. So if you know that in advance, you're kind of okay. And some of y'all may be able to look at that and, and in your head already know, okay, 5 is going to the other side. It's going to be the numerator. The 2 is going to be the denominator. And if you can do that in your head, that's okay. Just if you can't do it in your head, then write it down. Like if, if, when y'all are in Algebra 1, I made you write it down. I didn't give you any choice. Algebra 2 is a little bit different. I give y'all a little more flexibility. So you do what you, whatever you know you need. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So um, this one right here, I'm going to take my x squared to the left. Y'all okay there? So I'm going to be subtracting it. Don't forget, when you go to the other side, the sign changes. So I'm subtracting x squared there, which means I'm subtracting it over here. So I've got 6x squared plus 8x equal to 0. Y'all okay there? All right, so then I'm looking for a GCF. What can I take out there? I'm going to take out 2 and an x. So I'm going to take out 2x. Remember, if you don't have a c value back there, you're going to have to take out the x. So I've got 2x, which is going to leave me with 3x plus 4. Are y'all okay there? I'll get it done. All right, so if I have 3x plus 4 there, when I set 2x equal to 0, this is still going to end up being what? This one over here going to end up being still going to be zero. All right, here I'm going to end up with what sign here? Negative. What's going to go on top? Okay, so if I set this equal to zero, I would subtract the four, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to do the opposite of my slip and slide, which means the three is going to come back down. Does that make sense? So my three is going to push back down and my sign is going to change. Are we all right with that? Mm -hmm. So then I have zero. Oh, I should have written my negative four thirds first. Negative four over three and zero. Because technically they should be written in correct order. Any questions there? All good? All right. Now let's take a look at this one on 11. So I've got my x squared's got to go to the left, and my 1's got to go to the left. So I've got to subtract this, and I've got to add this, right? So 2x squared minus x squared is going to leave me with x squared. And negative 50 and a positive 1 is going to be a negative 49. What is this thing? It's only a binomial. It's a special one. Okay. 
How can I make the center cancel? How did, why does that happen? How do I add two numbers and get zero? What? How do I add two numbers and end up with zero when I add them and they're not both zero? One's positive and one's negative, which is exactly what happens here. That's why there's no B in the middle, okay? So I, that means that this is what is called difference of squares. You, like, here's the deal. Like, I can't stress this enough. You have to recognize the difference of squares because it is going to show up, and it's going to show up over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Showed up in algebra one over and over. Like, y'all got to recognize that when I have. So sometimes I have a binomial where there's no C. That means I've got to pull an X out. Then I have a binomial where there's no B. That means it's usually a difference of squares, okay? But you just kind of have to learn to recognize those. So this splits. The only way, like we just said, to make a zero in the middle is for one to be positive and one to be negative. So what two numbers multiply to give me 49 that would add to give me zero? Seven. Seven and seven. All right, which means this one would become negative seven and this one would become positive seven. Are we okay there? So X then would be plus or minus seven. All good? All right, this one is gonna be a similar situation. I've got to add X squared and I've got to subtract 81. Are we all right with that? Mm -hmm. So when I add X squared, this now gives me four X squared minus 81 equal to zero. This is also a difference of squares. So really what we're doing when we have this difference of squares is I'm taking the, I'm gonna have opposite signs and I'm gonna take the square root of the front and I'm gonna take the square root of the back, right? So the square root of four X squared is gonna be two X and two X. Are we okay there? And the square root of 81 is what? It's gonna be nine. So I have this. Are we all right with that? All right. So. What's going to be my numerator? What's going to be on the top? Nine or two? Nine. Huh? Nine. The nine's going to be on top. Because remember, if I slid this back down, it'd be over two there. Are we all right with that? So I'm going to have plus or minus nine over two. If you need to set two X minus nine equal to zero and move the nine and then divide, like if you need to do it that way, by all means do it that way so that you don't get messed up. Okay? Everybody okay there? All right, um, I'm going to 14. I need to get everything on the same side. So I'm gonna subtract my X and I'm gonna subtract my four. So that's gonna give me X squared. When I subtract X, that's gonna give me a 10 X. And when I subtract four, that's gonna give me a 25. All right, x squared splits to be x and x. My signs are gonna be the same. So two numbers multiply 25 and 10? Five and five. five. This is one of those perfect square trinomials. So if I was writing it in its factored form, that'd be one of those ones that's x plus five squared, right? On this, that means it would look, on a graph, it would look like this. It would just touch right there instead of actually going through it. Does that make sense? All right, so then that means this only has that one solution. Are we all right with that? Good there? Questions at all or y'all are okay? All good? Okay, I'm gonna go to 16. I need to get everything on the same side, so I'm gonna subtract two, and I'm gonna add the three X. Are y'all okay there? So my four X squared is there. I have 41 plus three, which gives me 44 X. And then I have 98 minus two, which gives me 96, all equal to zero. What do I need to do here first? What am I hoping I can do? Okay, I'm hoping I can take out the four. It'll come out of all of them. So if I pull the four out, I'm gonna get x squared plus 11x plus, this becomes a 24 right here, equals zero. So, 
got this right here. X squared slips, X and X. Signs are going to be same. So two numbers that multiply to 24, and I add them together and get 11. So when I'm solving, this doesn't have an X with it, right? So since it doesn't have an X with it, it drops. So X is going to be, this is going to give me what? Negative 8. Negative 8, and this is going to give me? Negative 3. So I've got negative 8, negative 3 are my two solutions there. The 4, really, all it does is cause it to stretch. Are y'all all right with that? Questions, or we're good? All right, okay. All right. This one, um, all right, I'll do, I need to subtract x and subtract 21. So 2x squared minus x minus 21 equals to zero. I can't take the two out, right? So since I can't take the two out, I'm gonna have to use my slip and slide, y'all are right there. So that's gonna give me x squared minus x minus 42 equals zero. I've got X and X, signs are different, very good. All right, so I've got two numbers that multiply 42 and I'm subtracting because my signs are different. So what's your most common for 42? Six and seven, which one gets which sign? Seven is negative because this is negative. Your sign was there, all right? So then the only thing I have to do is I have to pull this two back out, right? So when I pull it out here, that divides and give me three. Here, it doesn't. And I'm not gonna have to go back and write in factored form, so I go write my solutions. This becomes what on this side? Negative three. And this one is gonna become Positive well, seven over two, are y'all okay there? Because I don't have to go put it back in factor form, they're not asking me to. All right, last one, I'm gonna subtract my x and I've gotta add my nine. So that's gonna give me four x squared. When I subtract x, I've got minus 12 x. And when I add nine, I've got this right here. I'd love it if I could take four x out or take four out, but I can't. So I'm gonna have to slip and slide, are you okay there? So when I multiply that four over, I've got x squared minus 12x plus 36. Are y'all all right there? All right, now I can factor that. Signs are gonna be the same, both negative there. So what two numbers multiply 36? Add four. Six and six. But I had to multiply that four in, so I've gotta pull it back out. Are we okay there? So both of these simplify to the same, three over two. But when I write my solution, because this was negative three over two, they're gonna be positive three over two. This is another one of those perfect square triangles. Are y'all okay there? All right, if y'all will pull out that sideways sheet from yesterday, I wanna show y'all one thing that is gonna go to this, to one of the problems on the back of this. So I wanna make sure that y'all are okay. So that pro problem at the bottom, on the front of that sideways sheet that we looked at, um, I wanna look at, look at it. Okay, it's this problem right down here. So if you notice, and this goes to, on the back, if you look at your assignment, this goes to down there. Uh, well, I'll get to that in just a second. All right, so right here, I the only thing I can tell about this right here is its vertex, right? Yes, it has a vertex that is at positive seven, positive one. Are y'all okay that that's the vertex, yes? If I wanna know where the solutions are to this, I can't factor it from vertex form, which means I'm gonna have to take it and move it over here. I gotta go over here and turn it into its standard form first, okay? Now, this x minus seven squared does not mean x squared minus 49. I've got this negative out here, leave it. I've got x minus seven 
Because when I'm squaring something, that means I have it twice. So that means I have that whole parentheses twice. Are y'all okay there? And then I have this plus one. All right. So order of by order of operations, I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with this first, which means my negative sign comes down and my one comes down. So the negative stays here. I've got to put this into a parenthesis because that negative is going to become this whole thing. Are y'all okay there? So when I foil this, this is going to, don't forget it, like that's what we're doing. We're going to foil that. I'm going to get x squared, and I have negative 7x here and negative 7x here, which a total of negative 14x. Are y'all okay there? So minus 14x, and then negative 7 times negative 7 gives me a positive 49. All of that is inside this parentheses, and then my one is back here at the back. Are we okay there? Yes? All right. Now, my order of operation says I have to multiply this negative in before I deal with this one. Are y'all okay? So that means this is negative x squared, and this is positive 14x, and this is negative 49, and then I have plus one back here. Are we all right? So this I can now combine. So now I have negative x squared plus 14x minus 48. That is my standard form. Are we okay? Now I can go from standard form over here to factor it. Okay? Because to find my solutions, I have to factor. Right? So now I'm going to write that, what I got over here. Negative x squared plus 14x minus 48. Well, I don't want to factor that with that negative in the front, so I'm going to pull it out. Are we okay there that I'm going to pull out the negative? So now I've got negative x squared. This becomes minus 14x, and this becomes plus 48. Are we okay there? All good? Okay. Now I can go factor this thing. So I have x and x. Signs are same both. Negative, all right. What are my most common two numbers for 48? It rhymes. Six and eight. Six and eight gives me 48. And if I add them together, it gives me 14. Now, does six and eight always what I need for 48? No, but it's a pretty common one. Does that make sense? All right, so that gives me that. So my factor form then, this so my, is going to be six and eight. So x is equal to six and eight there. And if I went in my calculator and I went to y equals and I graphed this in y1 and I graphed this in y2 and I graphed my factored form right here in y3, they would all match and the vertex would be here and the solutions would be here. Does that make sense? Okay, so that gets me like, that's kind of what you're gonna need when you get down on your assignment at, on the back at, so if you look at 13 and 14, you literally have to do no work there because they already factored it. All you gotta do is write your solutions. On 15 and 16, you are gonna have to factor it. 17 and 18, they're in that vertex form. So you're gonna have to change them to vertex form, okay, to get your solutions. And then on 19, they gave you standard form, but they want it in the factored form and the vertex form. So you're gonna have to go, that vertex form, we've done that, that's going back to converting from vertex form before, where we take, cut it in half and square it and all that. Y'all remember doing that, where y'all blanks? Yes? Okay, so that's what you got going. Everybody good?